well gone on section B here. Answer any tree. Fiona is driving on a motorway. She passes point A on the motorway. Her speed is given by that formula. Let's, uh, let's get this. It's important that T is between 0 and 5. Okay. All right. Fiona is driving on a motorway. She passes a point A on the motorway. Her speed is given by that formula, where V is her speed in kilometers per hour. T minutes after passing point A. So it's only valid for five minutes. But it's weird because you have to put minutes into the formula. V is her speed in kilometers per hour. You put minutes in for t, but it gives you the answer in kilometers per hour. Sure hope that doesn't cause problems later for me. Work out beyond speed when she passes point A. And A is the sort of beginning point here. So in other words, it's just uh, A here is just asking us to calculate uh, B0. So B0 would just be 109 kilometers per hour. B, work out Fiona's acceleration. That is the rate at which her speed is increasing. Five minutes after she passes point A. So the acceleration function is just the derivative of the speed function. dv dt at t. So bring down the power, reduce the power by one. Bring down the power, reduce the power by one. And we want the acceleration at five minute mark. Okay, so I'm just subbing in five now. Two times five squared minus 12 times five plus 13. And that would be three kilometers per hour squared is the unit. C. Find the time at which Fiona reaches her maximum speed during the first four minutes after she passes point A. Now, two years ago, roughly, there was a question like this with heartbeats that caught me out. I'm not going to be tricked again. Oh, no. So before uh, I do anything with derivatives to find her maximum speed during the first four minutes, I am going to calculate her speed at zero, which we know. And at four, which I don't know. Not going to be tricked again. Mm -mm. Uh, two over three times four power three minus six times four squared plus 13 times four plus 109. So that is. 107.6 reoccurring. Now I'll calculate her maximum speed by using a differentiation. So the derivative has to equal zero, which means a t has to equal zero, which means 2t squared minus 12t plus 13 has to equal zero. Can we factorize that, I wonder, or do we need to use the minus b formula? I think we have to use the minus b formula. So t would be minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we get two t's. The first one, the positive one is for roughly 4.58. So no. We don't want that. And the second one is about 1.418. That's the that's the negative one. So t equals 12. Uh, well, if I simplify on my calculator, that fraction is 6 minus root 10 over 2. I'm going to sub that in to the velocity now to see what I get. And if it is bigger than either of these, we'll go with that answer. Otherwise, we'll go with one of these two at the boundary. Not 
Okay, so, sorry, one second. 2 over 3 times that cubed minus 6 times that squared plus 13 times that plus 109. That is 117.27, etc., etc. Now, two decimal places. Yeah. Okay. Kilometers per hour. Okay. Find the time at which you want to reach the max speed during the first four minutes. Okay, that's fine. Use integration to work out Fiona's average speed over five minutes after she passes point A. All right, that's a um, pretty standard question. It's for the first five minutes. So it's one over five minus zero, integrate from zero to five, the speed function, two over three t cubed minus six t squared plus 13 t plus 109 dt. So that would be increase the power by one, divide by the new power, Increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. Increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. 109t. 0 and 5. Wow, the 0 is not going to do anything, so just sub in the 5. So that's 1 over 6 times 5 power 4, minus 2 times 5 power 3, plus 13 over 2 times 5 squared, plus 109 times 5. Let's see what I get. 5 power 4 divided by 6 minus 2 times 5 power 3 plus 13 over 2 times 25 plus 109 times 5. Decimal places? 2 again. That's 561.67. Oh, and you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to divide by 1 over 5. So I have to divide that by five, because <laughs> that's one heck of an average speed. Um, 112.33 kilometers per hour. Let me double check the answer. Okay, better safe than sorry. Two over three times that cubed sixteen that squared um yeah that looks right that looks right yeah okay that's okay for D. Um, and then a bit more to go still. Okay. Um, I'll just clear off a bit on the, the left here. Okay. Just switch to a different color. We'll, we'll continue in the blue here. Now, where are we? E. Uh, taking B dash to be the derivative of B and B double dash to be the second derivative, uh, four graphs A, B, C, D are shown close to where T is 1. The graph of B, T must look like one of the four graphs above. Write down which graph it is. Justify your answer. Okay. And I guess using this fact here so if b dash one is positive that means it's it's going upwards and if b double dash one is negative that means it's concave so i'm looking for something upwards and concave so that's only graph b therefore graph b There's an average speed zone on the motorway starting at point A and ending at point B. The distance from A to B is 10 kilometers. Cameras record the time taken for each car to travel from A to B. 
each car average speed from A to B is calculated. Work out the minimum time in minutes that a driver could spend getting from A to B while not driving above 100 kilometers per hour. So what's the quickest they could do it without breaking the speed limit? I guess there's a simple uh, distance speed time. So time is distance, um, which is 10 over speed. So that's 0 0.1 of an hour, 10th of an hour, which is six minutes. You can't be doing this more than faster than six minutes because then you'll be going over the speed limit, right? What is the minimum time in minutes to drive get from A to B in the 100 kilometer per hour zone? Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. Rowan drives from A to B, he passes point A, driving at a constant speed of 120. After two minutes driving at this speed, he starts to decelerate at a constant rate until he reaches point B. Overall, his average speed is 100. Work out his deceleration. That's a very, very applied maths question, if I do say so myself. That's a very, very applied maths question. And um, I think that's kind of mean, to be honest. But I guess it's the last question, so. Okay. Let's try and sketch this out. Um, um, he drives two minutes at 120. So let's just take that out of the equation and figure out how far he, he got in that time. So his distance is um, distance sp speed multiplied by time. So that's 120 times 2 over 60. So, well, 120 divided by 60 is obviously 2. So that's 4 kilometers. So that means he has 6 kilometers left. But he needs to travel the 6 kilometers in um, 8 minutes. No, sorry, we have 6 and he's used 2, isn't it? So in 4 minutes, in 4 minutes... So the acceleration, or the deceleration, so I shouldn't put the minus in because they already have the word, the deceleration is the rate and change in speed over time. So we know the time, 4 over 60 of an hour. Um, but what's the speed? So you know... I might have to graph this. I might have to graph this so I don't make a mess of it. So if we draw the time velocity graph, okay, this is what's happened in the story. He's traveled at a constant 120 for two minutes, and then he has to get to the end, which is in six minutes, so that's four minutes later. And he has to decelerate. And we want the slope of this line. And we know that this distance here, which is the area under the graph or the time velocity graph, that's four. Yeah, so th this really is an applied maths question. So I'll make this a little bit larger here. Whoops. There we go. Right, so here, this is the time in hours. And then here, this is the speed in kilometers per hour. And he starts off here at 120. And then uh, if we keep it in hours, are we talking hours? Yeah, we better keep it in hours. Give your answer in kilometers per, kilometers per hour per minute. Oh, good grief. Good grief. So I guess I'm going with this one in minutes. Ugh. Right, okay. So that is, um, what did I say that was?
uh, shows two, and this is six, and we drop down here. Okay, so this distance here, I see it's two forty. Conversion with the units is going to be a big problem here for me. Uh, I'm going to keep it in hours and I'll fix the units later. I don't care because I can't be mixing hours and minutes. It'll mess it all up. So that would be 2 over 60 and 6 over 60 of an hour. Okay. So this area here represents the distance traveled, which is... Um, four kilometers um, and so this here would have to be six kilometers uh, we know the base we know this height here so we can do it as a bit of a, a maths problem here uh, we'll call the height here x this x here so x times 60 over 6 over 60 minus 2 over 60 that's this area here, plus the triangle, which is a half the base, 6 over 60 minus 2 over 60, times the height, which is 120 minus x. That should equal 6. Solve this for x. Okay. 6 over 60 minus 2 over 60, uh, of course, is 4 over 60, which is 1 over 15. So that's 1 over 15x plus 1 over 30x. Uh, not x, sorry. 1 over 30 times 120 minus x. That's equal to 6. So that's 1 over 15x plus, um, uh, multiply that in, 8 minus 1 over 30x equals 6. So 6 minus 8 divided by 1 over 15 minus 1 over 30. Rats, I got a negative answer. Uh -oh. Yeah, because I have the signs backwards. It's plus 1 over 30 and minus 1 over 15. So, so I think x is 60 then. So he had to slow down to 60. So his speed is going from 120 up here down to 60 in. Now we said this one here was two minutes. And this remaining piece here is um, four minutes. So it's 120 to 60 in four minutes. So the answer is, the deceleration is 60 divided by four then. So it's 15 kilometers per hour per minute. Every minute he has to reduce his speed by 15 kilometers an hour so that he can go from 120 down to 60. And that hopefully will get him doing the 10 kilometer journey in six minutes, which should not alert the speed camera. What a hard question. And I'm not even confident I got it right. Is that the end of it? Yes.